the lumbar vertebrae and I have the sacrum. If I take these lumbar vertebrae and I've got them stacked, L3, L4, L5, and I put them on top of this structure right here, so you can see it nice and close, you can see that L3, L4, L5 sit right on top of the sacrum. And this right here, let me show you an anterior view, would be S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. So these bones here, just like we had the lumbar bones, these bones here were stacked, but ended up fusing together over time. In fact, by the time you're in your mid-20s or so, your sacrum has probably fully fused together. So when you look at this from the anterior view, we actually see these transverse lines right here. Okay, these transverse lines are fusion points between S1, S2, S3, and so on. They're not sutures. Remember, we find sutures only in the skull. But here, from the anterior view, we can see if I take just L5 here, if I take L5, remember anterior view, so we're looking at the front. If I take L5, you'll see how nicely this sits right within here. This region right here is called the sacral promontory. From there, as I said, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. And we can see these transverse lines. We can also see the anterior sacral foramina. Again, this is where nerve supply is going to go pass through. If I show you the posterior side, let me show you the vertebrae again. On your vertebrae, L3, L4, L5, you'll notice that on the posterior side here, we have the spinous processes. Remember, when you palpate your back and you feel bump, 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 bump down your back, you're feeling these spinous processes. If I take these again and I stack them just like this, you'll see that these posterior structures, these processes, these spinous processes here, essentially continue on with what we now see as the median sacral crest. If I hold it on the side, you might be able to see the bumps and ridges that go along there. That's the median sacral crest. We have posterior sacral foramina. We also have something called the auricular surface, okay? Not articular surface, not articular surface. Articulation, you've heard that word before, and an articulation is what you're seeing right here, okay? This is an articulation. This is where L5 is touching S1. That's an articulation point. That's a bone touching another bone, all right? This is not articulation, so watch the spelling. This is auricular surface, not articular. Auricular, A-U-R-I-C-U-L-A-R, -A -A auricular surface. It's actually called that, just as a side note. The early anatomists thought that this looked like the oracle of our ear, the outer portion of our ear. So they called it the auricular surface. And this is going to articulate with the hips, okay? The, the oscox is gonna come around and, and, and touch right here, connect right here, but auricular surface. Uh, we also come all the way down here, and as we see with the vertebrae, stacked on top here if i take my if i take my little pointer here acting as the spinal cord i can pass it right through here okay remember the vertebral foramen that's that hole that passes right through the middle i can pass the sp the, the the spinal cord right through there and that will lead into this point down here which essentially is the entrance to the sacral canal that's this right here. And it would come all the way down the spinal cord. It's actually not the spinal cord at this point. Remember, the spinal cord ends above this. So it would be the cauda equina. But it would come all the way down through this and exit out this sacral hiatus. And what this leads to now 
is another set of fused bones we call the coccyx. The coccyx, if you look closely here, this is another one, two, three, four. You can see it maybe on this side as well. One, two, three, four other bones that have fused together. This one's also sometimes referred to as our tailbone. So this is going to sit just like this, right? That's our little tailbone right there that I'm holding. Now, interestingly, I wanted to show you this. This is plastic. This is a model. Wonderfully made. It's perfect, right? Just exactly the way it's supposed to be. This is real. This is a real bone that I'm holding right here. So if you look at this, you'll notice, especially on the anterior side, something looks a little bit different than what we see in our plastic model over here. All right? What do you notice? Well, look at this right here. We have nice fusions between S1, S2, S3, and so on. What do we see here? A fusion on this side, but the bone didn't develop on this side. In fact, this almost looks like, let me take S5 or L5 for a moment here. If I took L5, and now this is, this is plastic, this is real, so it's not going to be exactly perfect. But if I put L5 on top of here, you can actually see how the spinous process of L5 looks like the spinous process of S1, okay? And I could take this, this pointer as my, as my caud equina or my, my um, nervous system and pass it all the way through here, okay, like the spinal cord. And when it passes through here, right, it just looks like another lumbar vertebrae. But this is not a lumbar vertebrae here. Even from the anterior view, it really looks like it would be a lumbar vertebrae. This is L5. If I take this off, this is actually S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. Okay? So here, we would see these transverse lines coming across. There's one, here's another, another, another. And comes all the way down. Our coccyx would be way down here. This one's broken off a little bit. Um, but my point here is, you know, we, we look at these, these plastic models and like I said, they're, they're perfect and they look just right, you know, but in, in reality, our, our, our bones and our bodies are not exactly perfect. Um, you know, even, you know, we think of ourselves as having symmetry on both sides, you know, even right here, this is not perfectly symmetrical on both sides. It looks just a little bit different, but that's the reality of our, our, our real anatomy.